Here it comes. Sunshine. Something we all take for granted, with good reason. Sun comes up in the morning like clockwork. We all like the sun. It's really nice, but actually much more than nice. Many people don't realize just how much power comes from the sun. Energy, not these guys. I'm talking about renewable energy, in particular, residential solar, which is a big part of renewable energy production. Most people who add solar get a number of panels to supplement grid power during the day. Well, many are now adding battery storage for grid backup for critical appliances. Some are going further, configuring a whole house backup system. If the grid goes out, your system can power all the circuits in your house. You may have to manage your power consumption to make that work. The final step, going completely off-grid, is admittedly not for the faint of heart. But is it feasible? Can my solar system power my all-electric house, plus my electric car, 24-7, year-round? That's the question. Can I go off-grid with no compromises? I live in warm, sunny San Diego County, about 20 miles inland from the coast. My house is about 1,500 square feet, very well insulated. I'm home all the time, so I'm actively using power day and night. I've got 24 panels on my south-facing roof, rated at 400 watts each, for a total of 9.6 kilowatts. An in-phase simulation of my solar panel array for my area suggests a total potential energy output over a year of 17,304 kilowatt hours which is about two and a half times what I used during my last year on the grid. Wow. So, at first blush, it would seem my system is way overpowered. Well, on average, it is. And on most days, the system will have the capacity to produce much more than I need. But on those short winter days, when thick clouds cover the sky, and it's pouring rain, the system output tanks, then what? What if that goes on for a couple of days? Or a week? That's the experiment. To go off grid, I needed batteries to power the house overnight, and to add some daytime power to fill in when my panels alone can't satisfy the peak loads. I have 40 kilowatt hours of battery storage capacity. By comparison, my car's battery holds 75 kilowatt hours, almost twice as much. So is 40 kilowatt hours enough? Is it too much? When I sized the installation, I didn't really know. I flipped the breaker to disconnect from grid power several months ago, in June when the days are long and the sun always shines. <laughs> After just a few days, there was no question that the system was more than up to providing all my energy during the summer. But how has it done since then? Let's take a look. I'm going to use the Enphase app's daily energy chart to show how my system has generated power in response to available sunlight and my energy usage. Okay, the green at the bottom of the page shows the state of battery charge over the course of 24 hours. At the top, the bars above the line show energy provided by the system. Solar panel output shown with the blue bars and battery output shown by the green bars. Each bar is for a 15 minute interval. Bars below the line show energy consumed for household loads in orange and energy used to charge the batteries in green. This is for June 25th, a clear day. The panel output rose steeply from sunrise, charging the batteries. The sharp spike after 6 a.m. was the water heater, responding to my morning shower, mostly pulling power from
from the batteries. Once the home batteries were charged to 100%, I turned on the car charger, typically at 16 amps, 3.8 kilowatts, but I could charge at higher or lower rates. And then I turned that off when the air conditioning came on. The little bumps are various other loads. As the sun set, with panel output failing, the system started pulling energy from the batteries to power the air conditioning. Since I don't participate in net metering and can't export surplus power to the grid, the system reduces the panel output to match loads. This line shows about how much energy the system could potentially generate during the course of the day if I had use for it. So, a lot of unused capacity. As with any public utility, my solar system has to continuously balance electricity generation and loads. Otherwise, bad things happen. This next chart for July 3rd shows the power generation curve when morning fog sets in. San Diego's so-called marine layer, which takes a divot out of power output before 8 a.m. On this day, I turned on the car charger before the home batteries were fully charged. The system then prioritized the car charging before using any excess power to finish charging the home batteries. In the afternoon, the air conditioning kicked in along with other minor loads, but still lots of excess capacity in the system. Then, in late August, an unprecedented heat wave arrived and lasted for a couple of weeks many days with highs over 100 degrees, but more unusual, lows at night that sometimes stayed in the 80s. The heat pump ran almost continuously to keep my house cool. This heat pump has a two-stage compressor, but I programmed it to stay on its low setting, so when it's hot, it runs for hours at a time. The variable speed air handler runs just fast enough to maintain the set temperature usually about 74 degrees. Running that way, the heat pump only draws about 1,300 watts of power, which isn't much more than a hair dryer. So the hit wasn't so bad, even with the heat pump running most of the time. On September 7th, the battery charge dropped to 70%. The air conditioning came on around 8 a.m., so the home batteries did not reach 100% until noon. Typically, that would happen around 10. The air conditioning ran until 9 p.m. Still, there was plenty of capacity for other uses had I needed it. So the system had no problem with the heat wave because there was always plenty of sun. But then a hurricane moved up the Baja Peninsula the next day. It didn't hit us, but its circulation brought overcast skies and rain for several days while the heat and need for air conditioning continued. On September 8th, with overnight temperatures in the 80s, the air conditioning was running on and off during the early part of the night. The batteries dropped to 67% charge. The sky was mostly cloudy in the morning, with maximum solar panel output just briefly reaching only 5.5 kilowatts, versus a summer high of around 6.6. The afternoon was solid overcast, brightening for about an hour, letting the system output go up to a modest 4.3 kilowatts of power for that time. By 3 p.m., the batteries made it up to 98%, but never higher. So the system was producing its maximum capacity all day. Any more electrical usage would have driven the battery charge down. All of September 9th was overcast with rain starting late morning with a high of 87 degrees. System production was less than one kilowatt much of the day, peaking at just 2.5 kilowatts. Not much at all. The next day, the temperatures finally cooled with highs in the upper 70s, but more overcast and rain. The batteries dropped to 67% charge. Some thinning of the cloud cover in the afternoon allowed the maximum output to rise briefly to a decent 4 kilowatts, but the battery still never made it to 
On September 11th, full sunshine returned after some morning overcast with temperatures in the 80s. You can see the curve is nice and smooth. I drove my car about 60 minutes total during the morning while catching up on shopping. I started charging the car when I got home, orange bars, and also the air conditioning came on. But then some clouds appeared in the afternoon. The blue panel output bars above the line become choppy, so the home batteries had to take up some of the slack indicated by those green battery discharge bars on top of the blue. So again, the batteries never made it to 100%. The next day, the fifth day of the storm, brought even more overcast skies, but with a couple of short periods of lighter gray. I ran the clothes dryer an energy glutton at 3 p.m., drawing on the batteries. The air conditioning added to the load. The batteries had dropped to 65% in the morning, and with panel output reaching just one short peak of 5 kilowatts, the batteries never made it back to 100%. I was starting to become more comfortable with that. September 13th finally brought some normalcy. After starting gray, the skies turned mostly cloudy, then partly cloudy, then full sun in the afternoon with a smooth power output curve. The batteries at last made it back to 100% charge by the end of the day, after dropping as low as 65% over the last few overcast days. But that low was in fact a pleasant surprise after all the wet gray days. I was expecting much worse. Instead, I always had at least two-thirds of the battery capacity in reserve. So, too much battery capacity? With cooler fall weather coming, the heat pump will go idle. The house will need almost no heating or cooling, so less demand for electricity. But now in October, I'm already noticing the much shorter daylight hours and the sun lower in the sky. With winter, the heat pump will be running on batteries at night, heating the house and no doubt eating into that excess capacity. Will the panels be able to restore their charge during short gray days? Part two of this video will document these challenges and will draw some conclusions about how well my system was sized, panels versus batteries, and how those results might extrapolate to other households and locations. Thanks for watching.